Welcome to the F3 podcast, where we discuss all things that pertain to faith, family, and finances. And we are your host today. I am Dr. Lionel M. Blair Sr., and I'm sitting next to the glorious, the wonderful. She is the sainted mother herself. She's the mother of all mothers. St. Jasmine the First, Dr. Jasmine Blair, we welcome you today. And remember, though, remember, no subject is <laughs> off limits. Welcome, everybody, to the F3 Podcast. Shout out to all of our first-time viewers and our long-time yes. viewers alike. Welcome, welcome. Listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that little notification bell in the corner so you'll be notified every time we drop a new episode. And remember, we will talk about what your pastor won't. So we got a good topic for you today, as always. And this is actually coming into controversy again. I don't think we're ever going to solve this completely, but yeah. it's it's a hot topic. So we're going to discuss it about putting your spouse before your children. Now, one of the things that I think is very important with this is background. And so before we get into yeah. that, to the topic itself, I want to spend some time talking about the background, the kind of lay the foundation to this right now what do i mean when i say background we've got to recognize how everybody was raised right we were raised very different and let's be honest most of us today unfortunately because of how society is because people can't make up their mind and most of us come from a home that was broken or split or, you know, our parents remarried, they got divorced, single parent, however. And it's no shame to anybody for whatever choices their parents made or maybe if you're a parent yourself, what choices you made. But even in that conversation, we have to recognize how that plays into the issue that's at hand today. If, you're, if you grew up in a single parent home, you didn't have the privilege to really see any kind of working relationship. Rather, it was, you know, a marriage or rather it was, you know, a living cohabilitation situation. You didn't get to see any of that. Right. You just saw one person. So however you shaped your view of, you know, what a marriage looked like, what a healthy relationship looked like, a partnership of working together, uh, uh, father, mother, husband, wife, raising the kids and doing life together. You just didn't have that. And and there's no nice, fancy way to say that. You just didn't see it. Now, you might have had aunts and uncles or grandmas or whoever, but at the end of the day, you did not see that on a daily basis. Right. And then if your parents got divorced, maybe you saw that, but we don't know how healthy that was or wasn't if it ended up in a divorce, especially if you were young versus you being older and having kind of seen a healthy side as well as an unhealthy side. Well, we have to recognize, or maybe your parents never got married or they just lived together for a long time before they got married. All of these things are part of what I'm saying is the background and they shape the overall experience of what you have now brought into the conversation when it comes to your marriage. And a lot of people do not have this conversation or they do, in my opinion, they don't spend enough time on this conversation. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things that's kind of brushed over and there's not a lot of detail spent into what that looks like. You know, things like, okay, do you, uh, when you argue, is that something that you do in front of your children? Do they see you argue? Do they see you make up? Do they see you disagree? Do they see you work together? These things are a part of this conversation as far as what that actually looks like. And because that conversation is not had of what that partnership is going to look like on a daily basis, this is the part of that conversation that people don't get to because right. they don't spend enough time on it is the who comes first. You know, we've all seen the whole thing with the plate of food. So we've talked about the plate of food. And yeah. honestly, whatever works for your house, it, it really is not this serious for people to be arguing about, you know, feeding somebody first does not mean that your child is starving and they're not eating, which brings us into this part of the conversation in general. You know, it's like the, the old adage, who came first, the chicken or the egg? Who came first, the spouse or the child? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo! You know, and the reality is, I don't think people really like this conversation. 
But the picture it this way. In most cases, if you have the opportunity to do it this way, then the spouse generally, yes, would come before the child. So then the question is a no brainer because the covenant that you had came before the child and long after that child has grown and gone, the covenant will be what you have left. But even if you have the blended family, because remember, like I said, if you're over 35, it's stepdaddy season. So very likely you will enter the, the blended family phase. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I mean, it's true. It's true. It, and, now, and, and the reality is there are people who don't have children. There are people who are waiting to go on in a different phase of life. But the truth of the matter is you have to recognize that even if it ends up being another way, right? then you have to prioritize that covenant. Because again, yeah. the goal is that covenant is the foundation of supporting the health and the well-being of that child in that blended or those children in that blended environment. Right. And did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, and you got to do what's best for your family, what brings peace to your house. Um, you know, if you want to take it biblically, biblically, your spouse does come first, but that can be expressed in many different ways. Okay. Now, listen, like, like I know for us, like, listen, like if, if the kids are anxious, they hungry, they irritable or whatever, I want them to get their plate of food <laughs> because I want to be able to eat mines in peace. You to turn his back to the food. Yeah, I want to be able to eat my food in peace. OK, so so I don't want no grumpy kids complaining. That's going to I, I want to be able to enjoy my meal. So, I, you know, in such cases, listen, get them cheering out the way first, you know, and you don't always have to make my plate. You know, I make my own plate, you know. That's a whole nother episode because <laughs> we got some some infamous preachers to blame for that. So. Yeah. As as a father, mm -hmm. um, if I got irritable children, get them out the way. Like, I don't feel disrespected as a man as a husband, if they get the first plate, you know, now, however, mm -hmm. you know, I will say this too, because see, each family dynamic is different. Right. Right. Each family dynamic is different. Each household dynamic is different. Um, I find it, I find it just through people that we've counseled over the years too, mm -hmm. that it's kind of more so hard for single mothers to make that adjustment. That's true. It's hard for single mothers because, you know, they've been they've been running the they've been running their own house for so long, and then when a man comes in, mm -hmm. it's almost like okay, it's if if he wants to make some changes, it's a whole trigger, it's a whole culture shock. Yeah, because you're used to you're used to bossing it on your own, you know. And this is why, like I said in the beginning, people sometimes don't spend enough time on this conversation. Yeah. Maybe it's had and maybe it's touch and go because, you know, there are some cases where they they want the the new husband slash father stepdaddy to be more involved. Yeah. And then when mad day comes, it's just like, oh, well, that, that ain't my, my these ain't my kids. It ain't my problem kind of right. situation. And so regardless of how you come to this space, the conversation has to be had and you really, for the health of the covenant, you want to prioritize each other. Mm -hmm. It has to be understood. One of the things I've noticed when I go out in public, when you typically see, and it's not every case, this is just my personal experience, a situation where the child is falling out, hollering in the stove. And yes, children sometimes just do things because their children are tired, they're cranky, they're learning behavior skills, they're developing. But I'm talking about the ones that's just acting a monkey. And I don't even like to use that terminology. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about somebody with special needs. I'm talking about a child that is just choosing knowingly and consciously to be defiant. In a lot of those cases, that child is put first in an unhealthy way. Yeah. 
It's like that recent video we saw going viral where that child was screaming so bad on that plane that they couldn't even take off. Yeah. Not whether just the child was visibly upset or irritable. I mean, they, they had to escort the lady off the plane because they couldn't even get the flight in the air. That's how bad the child was acting up and hollering and screaming. They couldn't hear the attendant speaking over the loudspeaker. They had to escort, and the mama had an attitude saying that it wasn't fair. No, and you, they was being treated wrong. See, you, that, you that's a hollering child <laughs> up here. I'd be mad too. Not just a child that's going through. Yes, children are people. They buy a ticket. They have a right to be on the plane. But this child, the plane couldn't even take off. That's my point, though. When you create a situation where it's all about the child, it's all about the children in an unhealthy way, that's what it produces, a little hellion. And your whole life then become begins to revolve around that child in an unhealthy way yeah this is why a lot of marriages fall apart and this is the conversation that the church don't want to have not this enough. is why a lot of marriages fall apart a lot of marriages are not healthy there's a lot of bickering because the spouse typically it's the wife it, it can be either one but if we're going to be honest typically it's the wife because you know the mother's on their show my little baby and it becomes all about my little baby we're not talking about a newborn we're talking about a child so there's somebody that's five six and up right there's so much centered around them that now the covenant that's supposed to be the foundation for this family that you're building is now on the back burner or not even a thought and everything is about the child listen at some point you have to carve out time to maintain the marriage you have to and this goes for both spouses. We can talk about this uh, multiple different ways yeah. because, you know, then you got the ones that's the workaholic. You got the pastors that's at church all the time. You see what I'm saying? We can carve this out multiple ways. But this specific episode, we're focusing on when the child is put or the children are put first. Yeah. What happens is there's either no time to develop the covenant or your whole marriage revolves around the kids. Most of the conversation, most of the outings are everything pertaining to the children. Right. And this is why a lot of people become empty nesters later on. And you see these people get divorced after 15, 20 years. Yeah. Now that they don't raise, I mean, they treat it like a career that they just retired from. Well, the kids gone, they raised. All right, it was good seeing you. Right. <laughs> now have a nice life. Right. It becomes like this job that they just retired from. And this is why I don't understand why a lot of y'all idolize the previous generation. Well, what happened to the marriages like grandma and grandpa? Their marriages was not all of that. Right. A lot of those yeah. were quantity marriages, not quality marriages. It's cute to say that they was married for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. But when you look at the quality, the glue, the fabric, the meat of what that marriage actually was, it was literally just an exchange in a business arrangement that was content and comfortable just to get by and raise the children. And honestly, we're going to be honest that that guarantee you're going to get some because you got somebody there. It was just a comfortable arrangement for everybody. Yep, it was, it was where, you know, the man was taken care of. Um, you know, the man would work and bring home the bacon. But see, he, he you know, a lot of the men used to beat their wives. And they was emotionally unavailable for their children. Yeah. And so as we really get into the meat of this, for those of you that are hearing this and you're upset, why are you upset with prioritizing your spouse over your children? Right. We're not saying neglect your children. We're yeah. just saying prioritize. Now, common sense says if you have a child that special needs, your child has some kind of ailment, they need to go to the emergency room. That is something life threatening and life altering that you need to take care of. Duh. We're not talking about that. So let, let's put these defenses down and really ask yourself, why is it challenging for me to prioritize my spouse? Yeah. Why is it that I approach the discussion of prioritizing my spouse with what about the kids instead of saying, how can we prioritize each other and still make sure the kids are taken care of? That's right. It's not that hard because see, when you got into a marriage and you promised to be responsible for this person to, for the rest of your life through sickness and health for better and worse, you made a commitment to look out for this person and to love this person unconditionally. So why then does a little mini human give you the right to skip out on that responsibility? 
You should have never got married if that's not what you wanted to do. And when that little human becomes a big human and they have their own life, see, what I'm learning is these the people that end up trying to run their adult children's lives and why they go no contact. Oh, I'm so hurt. What am I supposed to do? Pay attention to the spouse that you got, that you ignore because you're too busy trying to run your child life. That's now an adult. Worry about your whole spouse. That's right. That's that's what you that's what you're going to do. Worry about your spouse. I don't understand. And yes, there's a lot of different situations. There's a lot of scenarios, a lot of unfortunate worst case scenarios. But I find that a lot of problems in marriages can be summed up in the fact that either somebody got unrealistic expectations. Somebody has some kind of unresolved hurt, pain or problem that they done brought into the situation. Or if we really want to just simplify it even more, either one or both partners stop prioritizing one another Mm -hmm. it went from a marriage and a partnership to i don't want to do my part anymore which includes but is not limited to prioritizing you and yes there's a lot of bad examples but we've got to come out of this space where you look at prioritizing your husband as some kind of unnecessary control and you look at prioritizing your wife as a chore that you don't feel like doing when you get off work because neither perspective is correct so how do you think it got to this point of, of not want to prioritize the spouse over the children? What what do you think has happened either in the marriage or in society mm. or in the church that we've contributed to this space that we're now in where all of a sudden it's all about the children, it's all about the children at the cost of the degradation of the actual marriage? You know, it, it brings me back to slavery times again. Okay, okay. Um, because remember, you know, they had to break the man down. Mm. So the so the woman was forced to become strong in the marriage, right? Mm-hmm. Strong in the marriage. If they would, if they actually let them get married. Yeah. But anyway, but see, go ahead. But see, but see, the mother also became the protector of the children. Right. Right. Because they done broke the man down, so the man can't protect. Right. You know, um, master can just come in and take his wife. No, master, please don't. You this big burly man. <laughs> you this big burly man, or 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 or, or you're muscular enough to take master down, but master done broke you psychologically. So now, because he broke you psychologically, now he can just he he can just do what he wants. So that puts the woman in a position where she feels like she has to care for the family. She has to care for the children. I believe that psychological trauma has been inherited in a lot of, especially our black families. Yeah. I want to add to that too. You also want to consider narcissistic parents, uh, emotionally immature parents and emotionally unavailable parents and how that will then cause any parent, but especially a mother, you obviously now want to give your child the opposite because you did not receive the love you you deserved and needed. Now you want to give your child unconditional love. You see what I'm saying? Now you want to be emotionally available for that child. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. Actually, if there's any do right in you, any person worth they sought will want to give their child the unconditional love that they need as a part of breaking that toxic cycle yeah. of parenting. But in that process, Sometimes we go from one extreme to another in an effort to go to the completely other end of that extreme. Hey, even if it's at the expense of you, because I'm more concerned about this child. Right. And if we think about creating the environment to really give that child the best start in life and the most unconditional love, they also need, they don't just need to experience it, but they need to see it demonstrated. Your child isn't just going to learn how to love and treat other people from how you love them. They're also going to learn how you love on other people. So if you model an unhealthy marriage before them, then you can create a situation where they repeat that. Or if you create a situation where they're always prioritized, nobody should be prioritized 100% of the time because then you give life to a little uh, entitled tyrant when you do that. Yeah. Then they grow up thinking that that's how every relationship in their life should be. And they don't know how to handle not being the center of everything. Mm -hmm. So no matter how you look at it, it's it's not good to do that. 
Yeah. It's really not. At the end of the day, when your children are grown and gone, the person that you have left is going to be the person that you started this journey with or the person you made the commitment to enter this journey with in this process. But why do we, why do we, why do, why do mothers act like not putting their children first is neglecting them altogether? I don't think they've had it modeled correctly before them, if I'm going to be honest. Especially right. in our generation, when you think about our our, our parents and right. what they experienced, you know, our parents were basically boomers or they were either early, 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 early Gen Xers. Mm -hmm. So because of how they grew up, or for, for, from their eyes as a child, prioritizing and putting your spouse first did actually mean you were neglecting your children. Mm -hmm. You got to remember for our parents, there was commercials on TV telling them, Hey, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your child is? Mm -hmm. There was commercials on TV reminding them to hug and love their children. Mm -hmm. So either they experienced that or they were the tail end of the parents that needed those reminders. Hey, what about your child? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They really for them prioritizing your spouse was neglecting your children. So mm. a lot of people have not learned how to heal that trauma, and they don't actually know the difference. Yeah, because I remember, um, <laughs> I remember, you know, some of my friends. I mean, they they could stay out to about nine, ten o'clock at night. My mom won't have it. <laughs> okay, I better be home by like eight o'clock. Eight o'clock the time I better be home by. Well, it was dark by eight o'clock anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but I better be home by eight o'clock. Even if I was halfway across, I was halfway across across town. Okay, I better be back by eight o'clock. You should have been halfway across town anyway. <laughs> I don't even want that far. But, but you see what I'm saying? So for a lot of them, that was neglect. And again, they did not see that model correctly. So if that was you you got to get to a space where you heal your own childhood trauma and you don't use your trauma to perpetuate hoarding your child and becoming a helicopter parent and then there's no actual non-sexual intimacy within your marriage and prioritizing your spouse and loving on your spouse that's right you know we act like loving on your spouse outside of special occasions is a bad thing right how do you expect <clears throat> your children to grow up having loving happy healthy marriages in relationships with people when you don't ever actually model it for them you're not doing it just for them because it benefits you but as a byproduct it gives them some a healthy framework and their perception to build from you gotta realize this is for you and them and the foundation you set for them is a catalyst of how they will view all of their future relationships it's not that hard to do, but it does take you coming out of an uncomfortable place and realizing, hey, I'm doing a good thing by loving my child, prioritizing my child, but there's some unhealthy trauma here. You do not want your spouse to feel like the redheaded stepchild or the inconvenience that's present because you have a child. Because what you can't do that for 20 years and then turn around and go back to your spouse and be like, okay, I go back to paying you some attention now. Right. Doesn't make any sense. Right. This is why people just fall apart after 20 years. Yeah, that's true. Because there was nothing there but the child. Everything was centered around the child. Hmm. So what would you say to parents that are listening to this and they realize they've been guilty of this and they want to start to kind of pivot and go in the other direction? What advice would you give them? You're going to, I mean... <laughs> It's not a lot of. Uh, I don't have a formula for it. you. Just have to right, just right. do it because every situation is different. every situation is different. You know, uh, uh, some people may want to wean their child away from them. You know, yeah. You know, you know, find some constructive for them to do. You know, while while you spend time with your spouse, okay, while you spend time with your uh, husband, all right, um, because you don't want to put everything into your children and nothing to your spouse, and then when your children are grown and gone. You don't. You won't have nothing left. You know, we've seen, we've seen mothers. I mean, uh, 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 you know, we've seen mothers. You know, just just we've call seen, their sons. We've seen mothers with grown adult children. Yeah. So this happens. We've seen call mothers with sons. grown adult children, thirties plus, 
get remarried later on in life and end up getting divorced because they want to prioritize the 30, 40, 50 year old child over the spouse. Yeah, and you keep letting them come live with you and stuff like that. And then, then, and the then you get defended with these my children. They are they're your children, but they're adults. So you especially have no business letting a, a full able bodied grown adult. But it's as you say, you're right. It's typically mothers defending their adult sons and trying to center their adult sons over their their husbands it doesn't make any sense it actually sounds a little bit incestuous emotionally if you ask me because how in the world yeah. are you uh uh taking up if you're choosing between your husband and your 35 year old son it's your son that don't make sense right well it's my son you're not gonna tell him what to do i i walk out this man what that that's strange fire to me yeah. that doesn't make sense that doesn't make no sense at all. Yeah, for real. You know, and biblically, again, your your spouse your your spouse come first. I don't care. I don't care if y'all had the kids together or or, or it's a blended family. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, I said that. Yeah, yes, I did. Cause see, especially especially the one with the blended families, boy. I mean, they these my children. You can't discipline my children if they living in my roof. Eating food that I buy, okay, uh, 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 taking up my electricity. I can say something to them and and put hands on them if I have to. You've got to be a unit, and I think, like That's I said, it. people haven't spent enough time on this conversation. Yeah, are you really a unit? Because if you're looking at functioning as a unit in a true union in a healthy partnership, you need to be unified before your children, not just in word but in deed and action. They need to see that healthiness, you caring, you're thoughtful. How are they supposed to grow up to be a kind person when they don't see that demonstrated? Yeah. So it's definitely something to think about. And we want to hear from you. Tell us down in the comments what you think about this, because this is definitely a topic we're going to have to revisit, you know, and, and talk about some more of these stories, because we've seen this tear up many of lives you know one time there was a woman of god i mean this woman went through three husbands uh god bless her soul and each one had the same complaint she spent so much time chasing after her adult sons that a lot of their marriage centered around these adult sons a lot of their arguments bringing this one to go stay going to bail this one out picking this one's kids up they could never just go on vacation and spend time loving on one another because every time something went on with one of these adult sons the mother was always running on my son my son my son at the expense of her marriage so it's definitely not a healthy thing and it's definitely something we've got to change if we want to see healthier marriages and less divorces we've got to start to look at the framework of what some of the problem is and very much so this is it we you know we talk about what a lot of the men do and there's a lot of room to have that discussion but they're real quiet on this discussion ladies we can't just talk about the contributions that these men make now we're gonna be honest and we're gonna be fair about it we need to have this conversation too so you got any closing remarks before we get out of this episode? Yeah, that, those, those were my closing <laughs> remarks. We'll say it again. Well, <laughs> you, you can't make an idol out of your children. I'm going to say that. That's good. Don't make an idol out of your children. Because one day they're going to leave you. And, 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 if, and, if, and, and if you're one of them parents that want your kids to take care of you for the rest of your life, you are a special kind of sick. That's a whole different season. Yeah, that's a special <laughs> kind of sick. Um, you you want them to you want them to care about you and consider you, but you don't want them to. But anyway, that's a different episode. <laughs> so those are my closing remarks. Listen, thank you for joining us on the F3 podcast. Be sure again to like, subscribe, and share. Follow us over on IG at King and Queen Blair. And until next time on the F3 podcast, goodbye.